All right, folks, Mr. Rinaldi here again. We're going to talk about the time shift tool and how to use that to improve our multiple track recordings. So when I say multiple tracks, I mean that each individual instrument is recorded separately. This can be done in any number of ways by isolating people in different rooms, by recording to a click track, that's that clack, that the track that just goes so it can be incredibly annoying, but it's incredibly helpful. Uh, and this helps, and using this, this uh, method of, of recording multiple tracks helps uh, a producer or an audio engineer um, sync things up and manipulate things later. So what you see here are six different tracks. Backing vocals, top to bottom, backing vocals, bass stems, drums, guitars, lead vocals, and harmony with piano and strings. And you can see that these are, this is an entire song about four and a half minutes long. This is actually the song Reckoner by Radiohead. And uh, when, when you buy the album online, they included all the individual isolated tracks from the album. Now that leaves me uh, the opportunity to manipulate these tracks in different ways. So let's listen to this track. I've taken one of them out of sync. I think you can see it pretty clearly. I'll zoom in on it. You can see that this track right here does not start at the beginning like the rest of them do. You can see how they all start at the beginning, and then there's this guy off to the side. Let's listen to what that result is. Oh my gosh, that is awful. It sounds like they're not even paying attention to each other. But we can fix that. So this is the tool I really want to bring to your attention today. This is that time shift tool. We can take an entire audio region, move it left to right, or you know, basically sync it up with any other tracks that we need to. So that's located right here. I'm going to click on that. Now that I have that selected, you can see how it makes my cursor match this symbol right here. So once that cursor is changed, I can move this track left to right. But be careful, you don't want to move it too far. I can move it as far as I want to. And there's going to be a little yellow line that's going to appear when I've hit the beginning of the track. Boom. Oops, I moved it too far. Let's try that one more time. Boom. So now this should be all synced up. Let's listen to it at the same spot. I'll turn my awful humming microphone off for a moment so you can hear it. Now, I can also use this tool to mess things up if I really wanted to, but I would caution you against that. I could just take these tracks and move them around willy-nilly, but in the end, that's really not going to create a better sounding project for me. I can also use this, and if you remember our video from overdubbing, I can create short samples of me playing additional tracks on top of this. So if I make sure I have no track selected, and I can add a new track, stereo track, it's going to record right from my headset microphone, which isn't ideal. But I can do things like this, where I will add some random track. Here we go. And, and I can hear, this is part of overdubbing, I can hear what has already been recorded while I'm recording. So you guys can see here that I've recorded a couple of, uh, I guess we'll just, we'll just call them uh, percussion tracks or claps. Oops, and I put them in the wrong track, but I'm going to close that one as we don't need it. And it's going to sound a little weird because the ambiance in my studio here is different than the ambiance. If you remember 
Back to our reverb and echo lesson. You're going to notice that difference right around here. Raise the volume a little bit. 